what's going on guys and in this video i'm going to show you how to make an item drag system like dead rails in roblox studio so this includes the item ui the item data also welding so you can weld stuff like that this also works on mobile okay so this isn't very accurate to uh, roblox mobile but it does work on mobile how it would work is if you click it'll pick up the item if you click again it'll drop uh, you can weld it just by clicking if that ui is up so it does work on mobile like that and uh, anyways let's just go ahead and get this to work all right so in a i'm just gonna do this in an open in a new project so you want to go into the description get the plugin that i have is a carry weld system i will be adding the dead rails q system onto this uh probably in the next video so be on the lookout for that so you just want to go ahead and click this insert model button and it should insert all of this stuff so first thing before anything we're just going to get this all set up so everything in the replicated storage you want to put this all these folders into the replicated storage starter player scripts you want to take this down into starter player scripts workspace put these into the workspace other than the read script uh, server script service put this all into the server script service and then we can delete this main folder that it came with so now if we just go ahead and hit play on this it should actually work so we can pick stuff up you can weld it and it works just like right now but i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to add new items and stuff like that okay so the first thing that we're gonna need to do whenever we create a new item is go ahead and get a model for it so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go into the objects and the replicated storage and duplicate the test item and then bring this into the workspace all right so here it is the first thing you're gonna see is that the test item has a server owner and bool value in it you want to keep this here don't change that and then if you want a different item so let's say you want to have like a painting or something that they can um sell or something like that so you take this you have your painting so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to take all these parts and move it into the test item that we have so it should look like this with all the parts directly parented to the model okay so now you want to set the primary part of it so if you just click on the model and then go to primary part select it to whatever part you need so i'm going to choose this painting and then we're going to select all of these after that and go ahead and unanchor them and then you can get this welding plug in i'm pretty sure it's literally just called welding and then you can weld them all so i'll also put that one in the description as well for the welding so you just want to weld everything to the primary part so that's good for the model you can go ahead and drag this back into the replicate storage and name it something like painting all right so now what you need to do is you need to go into the interactables folder in the replicate storage go under the item data template and then duplicate test data so in here we can rename test data to painting or something all right and in here you'll see we have the data template we get the type of data, item data and then we create the data here we don't need to touch any of this down here uh, we can just leave that all right so the only thing you need to modify in here is test data so we can go in right here say test data test data dot name equals painting and then we can say test data dot value equals something like 25 test data dot fuel or something five test data dot usable equals false test data dot sellable equals true and then also if you were uh, curious you can go ahead and go to the item data template and this is the default value for every single item so every item will come with a default value of five they are sellable, they are not usable, they, are, they can be used as fuel, and they have five fuel. So these two aren't actually used right now, you'll have to make your own thing for them, but they are there so that you can use it if you want like a train system or something. And also you can add more data, this is where you can add more data, so if you want to have like, I don't know, like a weight uh, number or something, you can add this here and then set it down here as well like five if you ever need to add more data to the item this is where you can do it you'll just have to make sure to go back into here and set test data dot weight to like whatever you need all right and that's good so now what you want to do is you need to set this up in a script so i'm going to go ahead and create a new script for this just so that i can show you how you would create a script so the first thing we need is the replay storage which i use rp for game get service or get storage and then we need to get the painting data module that we just made which will be rp.interactables.itemdatatemplate.painting and then we also need to get the item data module in the certain server script service so we can go item data or something item data equals require script.parent.itemdata 
All right, and with this item data module, okay, there's one more thing. We have to get the painting model that we just made, which equals RP dot objects dot painting. So there's three things that you need. That is the item data module on the server, the module that you made for the data for the object, and then the actual object itself. All right, so now down here, we can say item data dot setup data, and we need to pass in the data module, which is painting it data and then the painting object. So after we set up the data for that, we can go ahead and just like clone this and then put it into the workspace. So we could just say while task dot wait five do, we could just say uh, painting object clone. So this will actually change the painting object in the replicated storage. It doesn't create a new object or anything. It just sets up the data for it. So we'll go painting object clone, which we'll have to make a new variable for this. Local object. And we can say painting object.parent equals workspace. So this is how you can spawn new objects. So if we go ahead and hit play right now, okay, we see an, a painting spawn right here. It says painting valuable fuel. If we pick it up, then you can see it. We can move it around. We can go ahead and take this to the train as well. And it should be able to be welded like that. We can stand on it if we want to. Okay, so now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and explain the item data module right here. So in here, all it does is it creates an object value and it sets that object values value to the data module that we made. This is so that um, we can easily access all the data for the module. This also means that you cannot uh, modify this table at all or else it will uh, modify it for every other item that is created which uh, you shouldn't actually need to modify if you're making something like dead or else you don't really need to modify any of this. And if it's a gun, you just want to make it like a, a tool instead of a data uh, item like this as well. So there's a few other things we need to see here. So if you need to change the hover highlight, if you want, that's right here. You can change this to whatever you want. Uh, all these UIs you can also change, but you can change the fonts on all the text label if you want them to look different. Uh, the template in here, you know, just change the text however you want it to look. Um, and also, if you want to change that, all you should be able to do is just take this into like, yeah, onto an object in the game, and then you can modify it from here to however you want it to look. Just make sure you return it to the replicate storage. So now in the interactable handler, there's a few settings that you are able to change in here. The main settings are right here. So the range, um, I went over these in my last video. So if you watched that before, then you should know what all these do. The range is how far the player can pick up an item from. The carry distance is how far the player carries the item from like the character itself. The max carry distance is how far the item can be before it's dropped by the player. Carry smooth is how fast the player can actually move the object around. And then the throw boost is how fast or how hard the player can throw the item. This weldable, weldable for folder can also be changed. I forgot to mention that actually. So anything under the train folder, all of these parts can be welded to. So if you ever want to change, if you want to make your own train model or anything, they all have to be under this train folder for them to be able to be welded to. Which this one, it can be like uh, different like models. You can group this as a folder or a model and it'll still work. If you watch the last video, you should know a little bit how it works so the item ui all right so this is also something that you can change if you wanted to so the valuable tag like for gold for example on dead rails as a valuable thing that shows up whenever you look at it so right now i have it to where if the item's value is greater than 15 then it has the valuable tag so you can change this number to whatever you want um like if you want it to be like if it's 10 or so if it's greater than 10 greater than or equal to 10 whatever you want it to be for it to be a viable fuel is just if it's a fuel item and then usable is also a tag if it's usable if item is without usable so i have three tags right now uh, if you need to create another one then you can just check you know for example we made a weight one right so if we say if item info dot weight is greater than like two then we can say local template equals actually we could just copy this all over so we can just take this copy this over and then we just change the name and the text to it heavy or something 
So if you need to create more tags for items, you can do it like that. So if we look at some items now, you'll see that they all say heavy. If they have more than two, which it defaults to like five or four, I think. Okay, actually, there's one last thing that I need to do in this tutorial, okay? So let's say you want to have a train system where the train can get fuel. So how can you get the data off of an item after like it hits a hitbox? So that's what we're going to do right now. So if we just go ahead and create a part into the workspace. This is just going to be an example. So this will be an example hitbox right here. We'll go ahead and set this up. Set can collide to false, anchor to true, make it a little bit transparent. And then we can go ahead and put a script onto this. All right, so now to detect if an item touches something, we just need to go script.parent.touched, connect function, we take in the other variable. We can say if other.parent, find for child item data, which this is how you're gonna, this is how you're gonna see if any object is a actual uh, pickup and like a, a draggable item. You just check if the parent has item data. And then in here we can get local data equals require other dot parent dot item data dot value. And then we can just go ahead and print the data. Oh, big data. And then also if you are like putting into a train for fuel, for example, then you can also just go other dot parent destroy. So this will kind of simulate um, the train fuel a little bit. But this is what it'll look like whenever you have the train hitbox in your game. It will just print all of the data. So this is where you can access all the fuel, fuel amount. So you, if you want to check if it's uh, actual fuel, you'll check if fuel, then, you know, item data, if item data dot fuel, then fuel amount, item data dot fuel amount, whatever. So yeah, apparently that's not actually, I don't know. It just destroys everything. And then it still works even if you like throw it in there like that. Alright, anyways, that's it for this tutorial. If you guys need any help, make sure you uh, type down in the comments or join my Discord and let me know. Like I said in the intro, I will be adding the Q system to this plugin as well. So be on the lookout for that. That should be either next week or in a few days. I don't know. 